Hi, I'm Liz Bennett Hayes. I'm um, an advanced practitioner in the Midlands region and my speciality is in midwifery. I work with several other training programme directors in the Midlands. I wanted to talk with reference today to um, a lady that I looked after um, called Alex, who I think gives an absolutely um, magnificent example really of what I feel advanced practice is in maternity. Within maternity there are lots of different roles that advanced practice can develop in. However, I specialise in heart's maternal care and for me um, it means keeping the lady that I'm looking after and her family together, giving the care that they need and ensuring that the whole multidisciplinary team come together to ensure that the patient journey is one <laughs> is the best it can be in the circumstances that sometimes occur. A little background about Alex. Alex is a lady who came to us at our um, university hospitals who had a twin pregnancy on board and despite feeling unwell, thought it was quite normal with a twin pregnancy to feel this unwell. However, when she did come in to us um, as a planned admission, it didn't take many observations and blood pressure recordings or anything else to realise that this lady was very, very unwell. So the clinical assessment took took um, took place and we did lots of investigations, including um, blood screens and everything um, to see how organs were functioning. And what we actually found out was that Alex had at that time help. So it's where the body through pregnancy, basically the organs start to fail. The blood, um, the red blood cells start to break down, the liver enzymes raise and you have low platelets. So actually it's a very, very um, serious situation. Um, and with that, we needed to give a lot of supportive care. A lot of these ladies would end up on intensive care, but luckily through the help of the multidisciplinary team, and obviously with me working, we were able to keep Alex and Josh and the girls together. Thank you. Um, so for me, um, as Liz says, um, I think sometimes it, the benefit of looking um, back makes you realise actually just how lucky you were um, to be in the situation where with the team that you have around you and particularly for my husband and I and our girls to have Liz um, as part of our care team or leading our care team, should I say. Um, the major benefit for, for us of having Liz involved in our care um, was just the consistency of care that we received. Um, it's fair to say that we were completely blindsided by the situation we found ourselves in. Um, and particularly for me, I felt incredibly vulnerable, which was quite an alien feeling to me. Um, and it was a, just a very strange couple of weeks when we were in hospital. And for me, you know, we saw Liz every day on the couple of days she wasn't working um, when I was in hospital, she sent other members of her team to check in on us. But to see that same person every day, it just really gives you that confidence in your care, particularly when we move to the postnatal ward. Obviously, you see so many different people and they're so busy with all the other mums um, and nobody really knows your background or the challenges you faced, you know, the obstacles that you're kind of still overcoming. So to have that person there who really just knows you, has been with you through the, the worst of times and has kind of helped you claw your way back to feeling almost like a human again, um, it meant the world to us. Um, and my husband and I used to say, who is that Liz? What, what, what is her role? Because everybody knows who she is. She talks to every single team um, and, and she just gets stuff done. And that's really how it felt for us is that, you know, Liz would come in, she'd talk to all these different care teams that I was seeing and together they would you know work together to work out the best possible path of treatment for us and we really valued that um, more than I can say actually. There's a very real example I can give um, which is the antibiotics that I was taking um, because because I wasn't very well I'd been on various antibiotics and I'd been on a drip for a few days and the team came in to me um, and, and said oh unfortunately you need some more antibiotics, it's going to be another drip for another three days. And at this point I was devastated. I think I'd been in hospital for about nine days and you know my husband was, he was pretty much living at the hospital with me. I was so fortunate to have that during COVID. 
um, but it was very tough on us all. And to think that I'd have to be in the hospital for another three days was just soul destroying. Um, so I didn't think to question it. I just was kind of very quietly upset and kind of, you know, really disappointed. We then saw Liz um, a couple of hours later and we had a conversation about the antibiotics. And Liz said, hold that thought. I'm going to go and speak to the team. And we were like, oh, OK, fine. And probably a couple of hours later, Liz came back and she said, no, no drip. You're going to be on antibiotics, but you're going to be on tablets. Um, and the reason for this is that initially the, the reason the drip had been recommended was because it was OK to breastfeed on this drip. And because the team knew that I was trying to breastfeed my girls, they wanted to give me that opportunity. But Liz knew because she'd visited me every day that I'd taken the difficult decision to stop breastfeeding while on antibiotics because it was really upsetting the girls. That it was making them really unwell. So even though they were safe, um, they just didn't agree with us. As a family, we made that choice to stop breastfeeding for the period of antibiotics. And because Liz knew this, she was able to go back to the team and say, actually, giving Alex tablets that aren't safe for breastfeeding isn't a problem because antibiotics full stop aren't working for the family and breastfeeding. So from that intervention from Liz, we actually were discharged probably three days earlier than we should have been, which after kind of nine, 10, 11 days in hospital, I can't even remember what it was now. The difference it made to us as a family was absolutely huge. I remember kind of texting all my family and friends and saying, oh, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very grateful for that. The other kind of thing that I think we've realised retrospectively, or certainly I've realised retrospectively, was that Liz really worked to kind of minimise my movements within the hospital. So there was a point where there was a conversation that I should maybe be going to ITU. And at the time, you know, I barely remember this, but I remember thinking, oh, OK, ITU. Could, didn't think I even realised what it meant because I was that unwell. Um, but subsequently, I've realised that if I'd gone to ITU, um, I would have been going on my own. Oh, um, my husband, I don't know if he'd have been allowed to come in during COVID, but even if he had, he'd have faced a really difficult decision between being by my side when I wasn't well or being with our newborn girls who were, you know, very tiny and, and needed their mummy and daddy. So, uh, you know, to be able to stay with my girls was and my husband was just the most important thing to me. Um, the thought of being separated from them a day after I'd given birth to them is just devastating. So we were you know, really delighted with the fact that Liz and her team had the resources in place to keep us all together as a family. The, that kind of brings me on to the final point, which is that we very much feel that Liz's role is quite a holistic role in terms of the fact that she didn't just look after me as a patient, but she looked after our family as a whole. Um, she really looked out for my husband in times that were clearly extremely challenging for him. Um, I wasn't well. He had two newborn babies to look after and I was no help whatsoever in the early days. Um, but also, you know, there were things that were really important to us from the beginning. We wanted skin to skin. We wanted to breastfeed. These are all things that were in our the plan that we had. But obviously, the moment you fall unwell, this would have probably fallen by the wayside. My husband certainly wouldn't have thought to be asking for skin to skin and breastfeeding when I was unconscious. That wouldn't have been in his game plan. Um, but because Liz knew this was something we really wanted, she worked with Josh to ensure that we had those positive moments that we'd planned for, even though things didn't necessarily work out to plan for us and we had a rocky start as a family. Um, Liz worked really hard just to make sure that there were moments of positivity and happiness in what were some really difficult days. So ultimately, um, we are incredibly grateful to Liz and the team for kind of helping us get through a very difficult period and looking back on the time with more positivity than negativity.